So I might have found a way to achieve full immersive virtual reality by using hands in order to simulate and feel characters in virtual environments. Hands are so essential to our daily lives, but I don't think their full potential has been reached yet. I mean, each of your fingers can move left and right, up and down, and flex. You know, thumbs can do extra stuff, but who cares? Each of these unique movements is referred to as a degree of freedom. So how many degrees of freedoms do your hands have? Well, that's three per fingers, so 30 total degrees of freedom that we can control independently. To put this in perspective, controlling a cursor on a screen only requires two degrees of freedom, one to move up and down and one to move side to side. Meaning that if you tried really hard, you could control 15 cursors on a screen at the same time. That's how powerful of an output hands have. Now, does a controller able to capture this insane output potential exist? Well, yes it does, it's VR gloves. <laughs> These can track all of your fingers to ridiculous levels of detail, with the more advanced reaching 32 degrees of freedom, which is including the thumbs rotation, and providing tactile, meaning touch, and force feedback to your fingers. What noise I hear? Do I hear static? Up until this point in the simulation, I'm just feeling things with my hand, but this glove has something called force feedback. If you look on the back of the fingers, there's this tape that can hold your fingers in one position. And when I finally picked up a rock, this is the moment where everything clicked. So can I come over here and pick up a rock? <laughs> all right, all right, I'm cool, all right. And with all of these amazing properties, what do people use them to simulate? Well, hands in VR, right? Okay, so let me explain how stupid this is. Imagine if thumbsticks, yeah, were used to control your character's thumbs exclusively. I, I guess you could play Royal Thumble with yourself, I don't believe it! but not much else. Obviously, that's not what they're for. In video games, uh, thumbsticks are used to drive, walk, rotate the camera, aim, attack, and so on. So, you know, why aren't VR gloves receiving the same treatment, right? Consider VRChat. How would you make VRChat more immersive than it, than it already is? You no, know, I'm probably gonna die of like cancer, and that's cool. Oh, well, that's pretty metal. Well, one thing I know is not that immersive is playing VRChat using mouse and keyboard. First, because, you know, it's in the name. And second, you're limited in the ways you can interact with people around you. And that makes the game less immersive and fun, in my opinion. The more control you have over your character, the more ways you can express yourself, the better VRChat gets. Okay, how many degrees of freedom do you think this guy's VR rig actually has? Well, each sensor, including headset, has six degrees of freedom, can rotate in three different ways, and it can move in three dimensions, so that's six. He's got five sensors, so that's again 30 degrees of freedom. Meaning that if you learn how, you could literally control a humanoid ragdoll just as well as he is doing using only your hands. I mentioned how VR gloves can have a tactile and force feedback. When you jump in real life, there is a force preventing your legs from extending, and beating that force allows you to jump. Now, say you were using your index and middle fingers as legs in order to make your character walk, so jumping would look something like. Yeah. One can easily simulate the resistive force experience while jumping by applying a force on your fingers using the gloves and preventing them from extending in order to make you feel like you jumped. And it doesn't have to be a jumping exclusive thing. If you manage to keep track of all the forces acting on your character in game and apply these forces to each individual finger's degrees of freedom, you can literally simulate your fingers as real entities in game, creating some sort of bridge between the game and your hands and you by proxy. Not to mention, you could also implement touch, so you could implement realistic walking on grass by adding some sort of texture to your fingertips, or being underwater by adding uniform pressure to your entire hand. What I'm saying is, in principle you could not just control any character you wanted to, but you could also feel every character you could ever dream of. You could simulate being in space by counteracting gravity acting on your fingers in the right way, or you could have realistic anime fights. 
Combining this with headphones and a VR headset could result in simulating anything's hearing, touch, and vision. Something I think would be pretty close to a fully immersive virtual reality. Except, you know, for smell, but someone else can figure that one out. And so, Project Homunculus was born. I chose this name because of a brain area located near the central sulcus, called the homunculus. The motor homunculus is a map of how frequently we use different parts of our body to perform complex actions, while the sensory homunculus is a map of how much neural space we use to process bodily sensations. As you can see, there is significantly more brain power dedicated to mapping out our hands, mouths, and tongues compared to the rest of our body, because these areas represent the most important body parts for performing actions and perceiving sensations. So, managing to accurately simulate touch and movement for hands would mean convincing this much of your motor and sensory cortex, which is pretty sick. I have an Oculus Quest that I bought in order to have some sort of surrogate of a social life during the pandemic. And it has camera hand tracking, so I can use that. After linking it to Unity, I took each bone of my virtual hand, assigned its relative angle to a numerical value, getting the 30 degrees of freedom I mentioned. I created some sort of basic dog or spider or whatever this is, gave it some joints, and simply assigned the rotation of index and pinky fingers to control its four legs. And. So, unfortunately, camera-based hand tracking is kind of shit, so I had to find a better solution. I decided to take an Arduino and 10 joysticks to make some sort of planar stick box thing, rather than an actual pair of gloves. My first thought was controlling a ragdoll, like I mentioned. I found this edgy Liam guy and gave him some sort of collision body. I mapped all of my joystick movements to his body. Finally, can I walk using actual gravity like an actual human? At this point, I started getting flashbacks. You see, I spent some time in my teens, and by time I mean like three years, developing this Skate 13 game. Obviously the game was shit, and it flopped. So, in order not to make the same mistake, I ask you, isn't this idea sick? I want to create a controller able to capture the insane input-output potential that hands have, in order to control and feel pretty much anything you could ever want to control. So as I've shown you, the technology required to make this happen already exists, but it's really shitty because it has no direction at the moment and has no reason to cost as much as it does. Like you're gonna create one of the most powerful input-output devices ever devised and use that to train pilots for fly simulation? Also, for some reason, force feedback on VR gloves is only there for one degree of freedom per finger. Which is, you know, fine if you're trying to pick up a rock, but it's not that great if you're trying to project a fully rigged virtual character onto your hands. Now my template admittedly looks really bad, but it's what I could manage to do being a full-time student. And I guess it's way cheaper than VR gloves to manufacture, and I could easily implement force feedback into it by doing something like the PS5 controller triggers are doing. Only on two axes, instead of one. There's many designs that could be explored for this purpose really. Some guy made VR gloves with force resistance that costs like nothing, so that's interesting. His gloves only have one degree of freedom of force feedback per finger, and no tactile feedback at all, but it could be upgradable, I guess. You could use magnetic sliders or having motors connected to the hand. Personally, I want to create a virtual world where characters can interact using this technology in any way they can imagine. Basically, kind of like VR chat, but with collision and force feedback. Look, all I'm saying is I want to make this real, or at least more likely to be real. And I'm gonna pour my entire soul into this if you allow me to. If you think this idea is cool, then please like the video or help spreading the word somehow. And yeah, that, that's all I think. Bye.